go on everybody. I would, I would, is this a podcast or is this a quicker video? Hmm. I don't know what to do. Um, I, I've, this is my fifth attempt at, at recording a video. Uh, there's so much to talk about and I, I just kept going on and on and on. And I was like, I don't want to just go on and on. I want to give you guys a point. So let's say this video has to be 10 minutes or less. I, I, I know what the clock says. So, okay. It's 10 minutes or less sports. I, I'm in a good mood, even though I lost money. This is my ripped up ticket. I had some college basketball teams that lost. I'm in a good mood because I did a bunch of work, or at least I did some work on my um, human genome application that I'm working on in Excel. And every time I work on that, I feel good because I learned something new about the human cell. And it's really, or human, gosh, the, the, I learned something more about physics and chemistry and biology and everything. And and that that's enjoyable. So I feel good, even though I lost money. Lost $105. MGM Grand, you got $105 out of me. You have a nice hotel. But you got $105 out of me. You also got $6.75 for a medium coffee. That that's that's gouging. Let's let's face it. That's strip gouging pricing. Anyway, we're gonna talk about sports though. Uh, and we're gonna do it fast because um I, I'm ready to be done with this video and go to bed. I'm tired. So we've got another day of sports algorithms. I'm not going to be doing them anymore because I, I I need to be working on other things. Like I just got a break. Like it's, you, you, I'm going to burn myself out and start yelling at everyone if I have to do sports every day. I'm really looking forward to wondering what's going to happen when I'm really not doing this every day. Um, we're trying that for a while here in February. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to randomly come back and do a video right away. Although I say that and then I end up doing it. But I, I need to break to see what life is like not doing this because I've been doing too many of them for too long, I realized. Anyway, let's finish up tonight. Uh, first, we're going we're gonna to start banging stuff out. NFL. I didn't even put the scores in, and I realized in a 10-minute video, let's do NFL another time when the Super Bowl happens two weeks from now. Really, really briefly, we lost with the Niners. And my video from the Colorado Rocky Mountains saying take Cincinnati plus three and a half looks awesome because they lost by three. So that's football. Oh, I can do it really fast, I think. No, I can't. I was going to do a, a, um, a uh, comparison between these two teams. Have they played this year? Did um, Kansas City play Philadelphia? No, they didn't. So this is going to be a brand new comparison. I'm not going to do it in this video. We don't have time. And it's weeks away. And there's injury reports. I'm not doing it. So football is over. Hockey was a one-gamer today. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. The algorithm pre predicted the exact score. I did not put Winnipeg on my ticket because I'm a bad better. Exact score. Exact score probably paid like 15 to 1. Anybody bet it? No. <laughs> there you go. It's in the Google Sheet for anybody who had access to the Google Sheet. NBA. Because I've done five videos about sports recaps tonight already. I've been doing this for like an hour. And this is the first time this video is going up. All three pointers had an unbelievable day. Take a look at how awesome all three pointers was. And, and I don't think the Portland game is over yet. They are winning by only by two with 40 seconds left. So this game's ending and that will be the cue to end this video when this game ends. And I hope it doesn't go to overtime. This unbelievable day, like this game's not over. So let's right now the score is 119 Atlanta. 121 somehow using nothing but three pointers actually created really good scores and results. It's amazing. Scores were, were pretty good for a lot of these. Like one, like I, it was amazing. The only game you lost was, was uh Philadelphia loses to Orlando. Now what distribution did we have? We had number 66. That one goes five and two. As a matter of fact, almost Every distribution in the NBA algorithm went five and two. How do I know that? Because I ran the macro. Biatches. That's why. No, I did. I ran the macro. And that's how I found out that all three pointers was the clear winner of the day. This screams so much needing to work on our combination testing. And I talked about something in a video that I'm not publishing um, that is so ridiculous that I had to stop. But I'm going to glance on. I'm, I'm going to gloss over it really quickly. I was trying to figure out how to make a unique distribution of numbers appropriately and test them. And I realized you have to make each one of these cells a symbol and not necessarily a number, even though it's a symbol that has a value as a number. And I'm, I've got some ideas about how I can combine some other work I'm working on 
to to use this exercise of needing every essentially every type of distribution that's reasonable is what I want to test, right? Because if we could test every type of distribution, then we would get an answer about what the best possible distribution was. Simple as that. So I have some ideas and and it's not solely related to numbers and basketball. It's actually related to a completely different topic. And I'm not going to mention it because it's too ridiculous and you're, you're going to think that I'm crazy, but everybody does. It's okay. So I'm going to work on that in a weird way. And we'll do a video tomorrow and I'll make some progress on that because there'll be two projects I'm working on at once. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about with NBA? I mean, this is kind of okay. We look back at the distributions and you see, yes, so many of these went five and two. Uta Winna was the old one that, that won over the whole season but now it's changing. There's a lot of work still to do on NBA. I did the whole NBA video today. It's an okay day. And for some reason, all three pointers rule that's number 10. Combo number 10 crushed it. That's just really good. Five and three on the spread, seven and one. No underdogs. No underdogs. Everything's a favorite. Uh, haven't done NBA for tomorrow. So there we go. What are we finishing on? The big kahuna. Finishing on college basketball. And we've got five minutes about. So my bet that lost. What happened? What happened? I bet six home teams and it lost. I thought, I thought you were winning, Ken. Well, of course, there's the old everyone's every gambler says this, you know, you can't win every day, yada, yada, yada. Well, I want to know why we didn't win every day. That that, that excuse just doesn't work. And I have I mean, we are five videos and me recording into this talking about what's going on here because I could just go on forever. But here's the end all be all summary of stuff. Maryland Eastern Shore is a really good team. Or, sorry, they pull off some big upsets sometimes and they're they're a good team. The odds makers had this right. The odds makers had Maryland Eastern Shore as a favorite, even on the road. They crush Morgan State. The stats will catch up to this because Maryland is doing it better. The only thing, the only stat that was an outlier for them, and I looked in their standing sheet, I looked at Eastern Shore and I went down and I tried to find where are they better than average when it comes to, to teams and stuff like that. And the answer was adjusted defensive rating. And it showed up here because I was looking for green numbers and um, sorry, Maryland Eastern Shore is this one. It's this number. That one's, see how that's like yellowish green, that 95? That means it's pretty good comparing to other teams' adjusted defensive ratings here. There, and then also their win and their win loss percentage is pretty good as well. So, but the other stats are lagging. Like they don't score a lot of points. It's like they win games, I guess, with their defense is probably what is happening. And so I've just seen them beat good teams because they, they hold them to fewer points, I guess. So I guess in these games where Maryland Eastern Shore wins, does that mean the unders are going to come in? Does that mean that that we need to reevaluate how we look at stats? Do we need to put adjusted defensive rating in here at like 50%? Like what would that do to this game with Morgan State? I want to get Morgan State off the top of this list and I'll show you another way we can do it before the video is over. Um, that makes it I don't know if stuff's changing. Did I freeze this? Freeze this power? No, I didn't freeze this power. What's going on? I can't seem to get it to change all that much when I like to get this margin to change. But here's what did change the order of things. When we sorted this by power, you see things like Texas showing up on top. Like, I think I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Hey, wow, they come in twos. Boy, Vegas sneeze, watch out. Um, when you sort this thing by power, we don't have too many minutes, and you look at all team, what did I just do? More sort options descending by power. Let's go back to our home teams for a second. Um, what did I just do? We're running out of time. You see, there's just too much going on. Point is, we didn't have the day we wanted. Let's back up. We're backing up to the way things were. We we went six and four, but I told you to play five teams. You only went two and three. 
Grambling lost. Morgan State, I can't get them off of here, even though I'm trying to. I don't want to spend my life trying to get Morgan State off of the leaderboard of the algorithm. I just have other things I want to do with my life. Um, but but I know they need to not be there. I want to get them off there. Um, I know that Grambling State's strength of schedule was bad. And a team with a really bad strength of schedule in comparison can, can overinflate their stats and that can put them higher than they should be. But they still, I don't understand why they lost this game. They led a lot of the way. I don't get it. Southern crushed it. Southern was good. Texas crushed it. Texas is a super powerful team. Look at the power right there. That's what I was trying to do is I was trying to sort descending by power to show you how the wind loss looks, looks different. See this? So now all of a sudden things look good. Problem is Oral Roberts is minus 1600 and Colgate was minus 2000. So that doesn't really help you because those lines are unbettable. So you end up getting this and you just, you lose a close one with Citadel that could have gone either way. It was a tough shot. The guy scored with a second left to beat them and Coppin state was injured. And I told you not to play it because of that. So that's okay. But you still like, you needed to have Citadel to go three and two and things would have been better. You're not profitable today. We're not profitable folks. First day with the line differential that we're not profitable. I want, I want, um, I want this game back. I want Citadel back. Although they did have a worse strength of schedule and they had that one, the one guy out costing 2%. If you could have won the Citadel game, like that was really, really, really close. What would our profitability have been? What if we flip the score around, give them 77. It's going to flip the result. And we're going to see that our value picks would still not be profitable. We still got butt whooped. We got butt whooped today, guys. It happens sometimes. I got $105 down the tube that I gave MGM along with a $6.79 coffee. We're going to see if I can get it back from them tomorrow because I will be doing a video tomorrow. And we'll be doing more bets than just the six that I did. I don't want to wager more than 100 bucks though. I like wagering 100 bucks. So what happened with our weight teams, by the way? We've got more games here. Um, we went nine and six. No, but that's because I had switched the Citadel score. Let's put that back. Citadel lost. So we went eight and seven, but we're not profitable, folks. Value picks are down 36. Everything lost money today. You lost four and a half units. Sorry, 3.58 units on all of them. And the ones I told you to play uh, were just the home ones. And you lost. What? What happened? Yeah, it was it was six picks, but we didn't play Coppin State. So this one doesn't count because I told you not to play Coppin State because of the injuries. You can't you can't say play Coppin State when I said don't play Coppin State because of the injuries. The, the algorithm is giving you enough information to not take them at minus two fifty. So I did say that, and I didn't take them on my ticket. I took Norfolk State, which actually won. And then I took I you know what I took? Freaking I took Kansas City because they were home here. And they it was a super close game and they lost, right? So there's another one on my ticket that lost. I had I had Grambling, Kansas City. I didn't take Morgan State. Didn't take them because I was scared of Maryland Eastern Shore. I went against the algorithm. I just didn't play the game. I took, I should have taken Virginia. That was dumb. They're really good. I took Southern that won. I took Texas that won. I took Citadel that lost. And I took Norfolk State that won. But I lost three. I lost Citadel, I lost Missouri, and I lost Grambling. And so I didn't win because I went three and three on a ticket, and I only played fours, fours and fives. I, ju I just played fours and fives, that says, because I am a terrible, terrible. If I bet twos and threes, I would have got something back on my 100 bucks, and I wouldn't be so poor tonight. But that's okay. We'll get them tomorrow. And I'm only... But that has to be my caveat. You have to do an acceptable amount that you can lose every day. I can lose $100 tomorrow. I will bet just $100. It's going to be a lot more games tomorrow. So it's going to be a more confusing bet. But I will do the, I will make the bet down at the MGM. Maybe we'll try to find some people to interview to talk about betting because I start having fun and explaining the algorithms to people when I'm down there. Sometimes if I, if somebody starts talking like college basketball in the betting room, I'm like, I'll be like, hey, man, who you got? I, I got good college basketball picks. Come on. You want to see them? And I just start showing them. And people are like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, eh, 
<laughs> and, and then you get to see it play out. So that is kind of fun in Ve in the Vegas setting, but certainly not for every day. But it's good for the tail end of this month, the January 31st episode of All Algorithms Out. Okay. So we went way past five minutes. God, I just never stopped talking. Um, but this is the video that's going up. So it wasn't a great day. Tomorrow's another day. Gambling's supposed to be fun. It was fun even though I lost it. I had fun. I actually had fun. I had fun walking back and forth and and this being a peripheral thing that was going on in my day because I made my pick and I get to rip it up and it doesn't nothing happens anymore. I don't have to track it all night. I don't care. I'm not live betting. I'm not waiting to cash it out online or something like that. Tune it the old fashioned way. So that's kind of fun. So I'll be up early tomorrow morning and I will be doing a video uh, from somewhere on the strip and I'll make it about somewhere. Maybe I won't make, make it at MGM because I got, I don't have bad luck at MGM. I actually won the largest single amount I ever wagered, which was $500. I once wagered $500 on a game. It's the most I've ever wagered on anything. Uh, it was, it was an under in a baseball game and I was at the MGM and the final score of the game was one, nothing. And everybody at the poker table thought I was a freaking genius. So I was like, there's this game that the algorithm says to play. It's an under. And then the game ended up being, yeah, they scored like a run in the ninth. It was like zero, zero until the ninth. It was unbelievable. It was so funny. And I cashed that bet at MGM. That was the biggest single amount I ever wagered. So maybe I can wager. Yeah, of course, we're, we're, we're going to try to get this hundred dollars back. Uh, even though I guess, I don't know if I've won or lost money betting money at MGM in the past. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Anyway, I'm tired. Go to bed. That was a bunch of sports. There's a lot going on and I'll be back tomorrow and you can learn the algorithms and not have to worry about me posting videos because I may be totally off doing something completely different. And the only thing I can promise you is that I will be completely unreliable doing something that I start to find boring and not uh, a efficient use of my time. And I only want to spend so much time figuring out how to get Morgan state to not be a, favorite against Maryland Eastern Shore. I, there's only so many hours in the day. And even as I continue to talk about it and drag it out, I want everyone to know that I, I like, I like a lot of you. A lot of you guys are super cool. Uh, people, there are people smarter than me out there doing stuff with these algorithms. I know you're not even telling me because, because you feel like you got an edge and you don't want to share. I know a lot of people do that. Um, cause they, cause they once in a while they'll sneak an email and be like, dude, do you understand how good I've been doing with this man? Here's what I did. You want my secret? And I usually like, read the email and then I'm kind of like, that's great. And then I just move on. And sometimes it, gets, it sits in the back of my head, but I don't generally do anything with the algorithm right, right away. Cause I'm like, I could do that all day. Like people are going to send me stuff and I could try to keep making adjustments. I actually, I'm going to keep talking. Hold on. This is podcast time. I'm gonna keep talking. I was started watching some YouTube videos while or listening to some and also watching some as I was driving, not watching while I was driving, listening while I was driving. And not driving. Also, just like late at night, I was uh, some basketball, college basketball picks started coming into my YouTube feed because I've been doing so many of these. And I was listening to a guy. He's got like 50 something, 50,000 something subscribers. And he was talking about the ways that these teams play against each other and whether they're like scoring from inside the paint or scoring three pointers and stuff like that. And we look at some of that in here, but we don't do a team by team comparison that way that i do in football football i do do that i i actually look at offenses and defenses and how they align point wise and home and away i don't do that with this with basketball because i haven't i haven't felt the need need to however i think discovering that maryland eastern shore i mean did they lose did they win a lower scoring game yeah they win 72 to 58 they hold Morgan's. So that's the thing is they are good. They got a good defense. Now, did that game go under, right? Because the final score was 130. Yeah, that probably went under, right? I have the over-under in here, I think. I think I do. So this is one of those where there that's some advanced intelligence. Like they it's not that they have an underrated defense, it's that they they have a really good defense. So they're holding teams to fewer points. The over-under was set at 138 and a half. Mm-hmm. So I have to end the video admitting that 
there's a whole world of information out there. And as much as I try to feel like I harness as much as I can, there's always going to be something else to look at. And there's always going to be a new insight to be had. And you can go down the rabbit hole as much as you want. I've decided that for my psychological well-being, as well as my financial well-being, focusing on this is not the answer for me. And while we have had amazing days and it does incredible things, um, sometimes it's also just numbers and teams playing. And once in a while, you get stuff right. And even and when you do a lot of the things right, you get it closer. But it is nothing that you can set your watch to. It is not, it's not a hundred, eh, I shouldn't say that. I want to say it's not 100% science because there's so many variables that are not measurable. However, there are a lot of variables. I'll say this. I decided to stop doing sports videos on January 31st because I wanted to do this financially a different way, which involves me not spending all my time doing it and trying to make it better for very limited financial returns and instead passing that stuff and intelligence off to other people and have them work on it while I work on completely different projects. Um, so for those of you that want to contact me and that in that are, are I mean, are finding this and it can become a source of income and it could be, I can see how this, you can get attached to doing this because it's every day. It's like, it's like another job at night if you really want to make it that. And sometimes it has unbelievable financial returns and you feel really great about it. So I understand how you, you don't want me to stop because you're like, dude, don't stop. Like keep giving me the picks. Um, but, but I've been doing that and I'm not happy in life doing that all the time. So I gotta I gotta stop doing that. All right. Good luck everybody. Now I pick people winning.